Hello everybody, thank you very much for joining me today on what is uh, another of one of my live cookings. Hope you guys are still alright, and I hope you had some fun uh, with the tempura last week. I had some great stories from uh, certain individuals, and uh, it was hilarious, but I'm glad everyone joined in. Uh, so today I thought some of you guys got so confident with the deep frying in the wok, so I thought we'd try something else. And we're going to do chicken karage. We're also going to do a curry udon. Uh, the curry udon um, could have had bacon in it, but I thought, seeing as we're doing karage as a side, uh, I would keep it vegetarian. Um, I'm using dashi stock in it, so it's not quite vegetarian, but it can be made vegetarian uh, just with a few changes, which if anyone else wants to know, we'll go through it a little bit later. Um, Karage was sort of popular in sort of the 20s, 1920s, uh, and it was um, kind of created just after World War II, well, right around that time, um, because it was uh, a way of sort of feeding the populace with when there wasn't much food about, um, specifically with, with, with chicken, because it was readily available. Uh, it's already become um, a very popular meal, no matter where you kind of go in Japan. It's just kind of focusing solely on karage. But uh, also, if you've ever had a chance to go to Japan, as my wife and I and a couple of my friends have been, you'll know that you'll be able to find karage in some form in the Lawson's, Family Mart, and 7 Eleven. I don't know, I have a good friend of mine who, uh, who, who basically lived off the stuff for breakfast um, uh, when he was out there in Japan. And my other friend just lived off one cups, which is equally as delicious. So, um, as always, love to see what you've done, how yours has come out. Uh, that would be awesome. So send me a picture or tag me or something like that on Instagram, and that'd be cool. So uh, we'll get started. Uh, what we're going to have first is so you will need um, the oven on uh, about 170 degrees. We're going to have, you're going to obviously need a wok for your frying. We're going to need a, a saucepan to actually make the curry udon in it. Need a little saucepan to make the curry roux in a minute. And then you need obviously a pan for boiling salted water for your uh, noodles. So I'm just going to go ahead and get some of this on the go. Uh, I'm just going to put my wok on low so it's not cold when I'm going to use it. And what we're going to do first, guys, is take my chicken from the fridge. Um, Jimsy Doodah says one cup is a perfect breakfast. <laughs> it is, if, uh, if you Jimsy Doodah. So what we're going to do first, guys, uh, is we're going to start with the karage mix, because ideally you can put this down overnight, or at least sort of half an hour, 20 minutes before. So um, some of the chicken I've already prepared, so I've, uh, I've got a little bit ahead of myself when I bought the chicken the other day. So what I've done is basically I've just got the chicken thighs, and um, I've just taken the bone out, and taken the skin off, okay, nice and simple. And all I'm going to do is, is sort of cut it into sort of sized pieces, so into three, and then each piece into half. Oh, the dogs are there. Oh. <laughs> you can see them in the shop. Hello, doggos. <laughs> Do you see them? Yeah. Yes, so, but in case you're wondering, guys, uh, we feed our dogs raw, so um, chicken is kind of essential here. And when mm. you, you give them the little scraps sometimes too. I do, yeah. Some, I always usually give them the, the chicken bones raw as a, as a little treat because they can break it up or chicken wings. You can still much. see sponge in the background. Sponge? <laughs> terror. Could you okay. use a different cut of chicken other than thigh? Yeah, you could use chicken breasts, you could use chicken fillets. Uh, I just find that thighs have uh, a much nicer flavour really and a bit more substantial. Um, but you, you can use other ones. You, you could use other other meats if you really wanted to. Uh, but I think chicken works really, really well. Wash my hands. Keep out of the kitchen now. What if you wanted to make a vegetarian karage? I had a, I had a coffee earlier, which oh, I was in the back, so I don't mind. Uh, vegetarian karage. So you could uh, you could always use your faithful tofu, uh, but. Um, I think what would be really quite nice is you could use uh, mushrooms or, or any vegetables. So with the chicken, I've got some uh, 
One tablespoon of sesame oil, and one and a half tablespoons of light soy sauce. I'm just gonna put that into the chicken there. Uh, I'm gonna crack, I'm gonna grate uh, three cloves of garlic. So just on the, uh, sort of like the Parmesan size grater. Just gonna do that, grate that up. Like I said, you can, ideally half an hour before you're gonna use it, or overnight would be best. Um, I think I did say you can use corn flour in this. Um, I'm using potato starch, which I said as well. We, we tried it with, with corn flour the first time and I didn't think it was quite good enough. So I thought that I would try and get the potato starch, which my faithful Asian supermarket had, which was great. So this is uh, ginger and the garlic, just gonna be grated off and added to the chicken. Would you marinate the tofu and the mushrooms? Yeah, yeah, by all means. Um, obviously use firm tofu. I don't want me using the light stuff because I think it'd be quite tricky. It'd probably disintegrate, wouldn't it? Yeah. Cuba's depressed now. Yeah, I know. He wants his chicken, but he's not having chicken. Okay. So in the bowl, that's got the garlic, the soy, the sesame, and the ginger. Just gonna whisk up an egg. So, put that in. And then uh, um, a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, and we're gonna give this a little mix. Just with a spoon. Okay, I'm find this one. I'm gonna find my eyes. So just give this a little mix, just get those flavours in there. And then, when I was doing my little bit of research for this, because this is, um, I would thought, this is quite an interesting spice that I wouldn't really find in, in, in Japan, Japanese cuisine, but it was cinnamon. It's one of the main flavours I found in this. So, in another bowl, what I've got here is a tablespoon, uh, sorry, a teaspoon of sugar, um, and a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and some black pepper and five tablespoons of the, the potato starch or corn flour. I'm just gonna chuck all that in. Okay, give that a good mix. If you were marinating it overnight, would you put the corn flour on just before you cook it, or do you marinate it? Overnight? Yeah, I think that would probably be best, because when we did it with the corn flour, I noticed that it kind of sucked to the bottom, because usually when you make, if you ever made corn flour, roux, and so on like that, it always does um, sink to the bottom where the water separates off. So that's that. Here we go. So that's um, ready to go. So I'm just going to leave that on the side there. So uh, what we're going to go with next is we're going to get on with making uh, sort of the curry roux. It's called. So we're going to basically need just a few ingredients. So uh, basically, like you would make any sort of white sauce at home, we're going to put uh, 40 grams of butter to melt. And you want 40 grams of uh, just plain flour. Okay. Now, if you're using um, a dashi stock or a dashi powder as well, I'm just going to use uh, 1.2 uh, liters of water. Put mix the powder in there. So vegetarian or, or vegan, would you not? Yeah, you could use a, a good a good veg stock, or you could make your own vegetable stock if you wanted to. You could make a vegetarian dashi if you also desired, um, and uh, you could use uh, shiitake mushrooms, and then you could soak them, and then use those mushrooms for your karate. So you don't waste that. So in my water, I'm going to put my dashi powder in there. Give it a little whisk. Stop ready to go. So, what we're going to do is once this is melted, which is nearly there, we're going to add the flour, okay? And you want it to go kind of sort of a nut brown kind of colour. Okay? And there's varying stages of when you make roux. Uh, when, I, when I was training as a, in college, 
you have your, your different stages, your first, second and third stage. The third stage just gets quite a bit darker. First stage is, is just you mix them together and then you start adding your, your white, your milk or your stock to make a bechamel or velouté. For this, because we're going to add, uh, we want to take it a little bit further because in that way it helps cook out the flour, which is really important. Okay? Mandy is just asking if the sugar has gone in with the chicken. Yeah, yeah, sugar in as well. So in now, in, in with the Karaga recipe, you should have everything apart from um, apart from lemon and obviously the, the oil, which we need for frying. So butter's melted now. Flour in. We're just going to give that a little mix, like so. We want this to nice high heat on this. So it should all combine like so. Alright guys. Turn that off now. Alright. So into a separate bowl, you're gonna want one tablespoon of uh, mild curry powder or hot curry powder, whatever your preference is, one tablespoon of garam masala, and a quarter of a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Again, if you like it a bit spicier, put a little bit more heat in there, by all means, okay? So we've got that there on the side. So all this will going to cook out for a bit longer. We want it to start changing color and kind of going like a nice golden brown. So while we're waiting, we can get the vegetables ready. So I've got an onion here, and we're just going to dice this up. Swaley man has waved who has? Quaily man. Ah. Hello, Reese. So, what did everybody think of the tempura? I really felt that the dressing makes that dish. Um, I really, I really thoroughly enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed making that last week, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. A real lot of fun. Okay. So here we go, we can... Okay. Keep that going. It smells nice. It does, for a bit of flour and a bit of butter. Okay, we're just going to dice this up. Loving the beard. Yeah, thank you, mate. Don't waste that little bit there. Swan egg. Right. So this now is starting to, as the butter starts to caramelise, it's just starting to slightly change uh, colour. And that's what we want. Okay. So into um, your saucepan. Okay. Put a little bit of uh, oil in here. Okay, we're going to add our onions. We're just going to cook them very gently. Ben Philan says no need to flex with those knife skills. <laughs> okay, so we're nearly there, guys. So when, like, when you make uh, a white sauce at home uh, with milk and flour and, and, and butter. You have to keep stirring it and keep uh, to help cook out the flour. Now what we're kind of doing here is we're taking that sort of process away and cooking out the flour at this stage to make it a little bit nicer. All right, it's nearly there. So in the other pan, you can add your onions to the pan with oil. And we don't want these to get any color really, so you just want to cook them quite gently. And with the uh, roux, this is cool, um, you can actually make it in advance and keep it cold and you can add it to, to bases to other things if you wanted to to give to enhance flavors okay if you wanted to make this vegan without butter you could just um, make a curry spice and toast the spices in a frying pan and then add them we're using corn flour corn flour and water that would probably be better right so you want it sort of slightly darker in color which is gone we're then going to add our spices I'm going to just give that a little mix, okay, and it should go quite, 
quite dry and thick like that. You want to give that just 10, 15 seconds. Okay, you don't want it to just, you don't want to burn those spices. Particularly when you're using dry spices, you just want to warm them through just to let the natural flavours and aromas come out. Okay? Can you and that's it. go over what you put in with uh, flour and butter? So butter and flour, melt the butter first and add the, um, add the flour. And just let that cook and colour. Um, so it still goes to a like, kind of nut brown sort of uh, colour. And, and then it will take about five, six minutes and then you can add your curry spices, okay? All of the spices on the list? Yeah, all of the spices on the list, okay? So the other ingredients we're gonna use, we're gonna use a pepper. Okay. And if you're able to get hold of uh, some pak choy, depending on how big it is, you can, if they're quite large, you can just sort of take them and just have like the outer leaves uh, like this. Just put them in, or with these ones, you can cut them if they're small, you can cut them in half. They're babies. Size. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, onions in. Okay. You don't want any colour on there. Just dye the colour on. Now, to this, we're going to put our stock. Okay, bring that to the heat. And once that comes to the boil, we're then gonna add the roux. Okay, that uh, spiced little mixture we've got there. Okay, so just back to the veg now. Just gonna dice these up any sort of size you want. If you want it a bit bigger, you can do. Makes it nice, a bit of texture. You can add other ingredients if you want. If you want to add mushrooms in there or any other peppers or some leek would be quite nice. Uh, maybe even uh, a little bit of spinach, we'd have to add it right at the last minute. Broccoli. Add broccoli as well, cauliflower. My wife would make a face. I hate cauliflower. Less than cheese. Any type of it's acceptable. Yeah. Again, with these ingredients, the pak choy isn't going to take long to, to sort of cook, really. So it's going to be one of those things that you can add sort of last minute when it's nearly finished. Everyone keeps asking where's the yukata. Jimmy asked this week. Yeah, I know. I need to find it. <laughs> I'm sure it's in the workroom. <laughs> probably needs ironing. Yeah, it's probably why. Okay. So I've got... Peppers, pak choy, ready to go. There's none for you, Kiba. And then the uh, spring onions, we're just gonna use as a little garnish, and we can get them cut as well. I've also got my edamame beans. You didn't use quite all of the stock, you know? Not quite, no, I just, um, I want to leave a little bit out because in case the, uh, there's not much of the roux or the, you don't need to use all the roux, otherwise it will take a long time to reduce down, which is why I'm not adding any of the veg to it, to the stock. Because it, by the time that uh, the roux is sort of thick in the liquid, it will be quite, uh, the veg will be quite overcooked. And you don't want that, you want to have a little bit of texture, so. I hate squishy veg. Okay, spring onions is a little garnish there. Lovely. So, edamame beans I've got already. Spring onions, ready to rock and roll. And then, right, so hopefully your stock's just coming to the boil now. Into that, we're gonna add a tablespoon of soy sauce, a tablespoon of mirin, and if you've got it, a tablespoon of sake. Okay, it's gonna go in. I use light again, like I said before, it's quite a quite a light flavour and it's it's a little bit nicer and, and so on. And then you can 
you've got a bit more of control when you want to season things as well. Um, when you're using light, if you're using dark, it can be quite uh, quite strong. You usually only use a tiny bit of dark, don't you, if you're yeah. using it in with light soy sauce. So stock should have uh, come back to the boil, and we're going to add the the roux to it. And give it a nice little whisk. You'll see almost straight away it's sticking it up quite well. So we just need to leave this to uh, cook out gently now. This will help make it sweet. What I'm looking for is a bit more of a soupy kind of consistency. Okay. Right, and we can just leave that gently to just uh, just reduce down. Keep your eye on it. Of course, now you've added a flour to it. It is possible that it could uh, it could catch to the to the saucepan. So do keep an eye on it. Now we can uh, while that's sort of gently ticking over, we can start looking at the karage. Okay. Right. So like you did before, guys, you've got your beautiful spider. Okay, and then you want a tray just for putting the excess uh, the excess oil on. And this tray we're going to use, we're just going to put the uh, chicken in to, to put it in the oven, just to make sure it's completely cooked through and there's no worries. So, there it is now. Might need to give it a little bit of mix. As I said, the cornflour sometimes separates from the liquid. Okay. The potato starch is quite thick, isn't it? Yeah. In comparison yeah. to the corn starch. Yeah, it is. It's slightly, slightly finer, different powder as well. It felt, it felt different as I was, uh, as I was mixing it. Okay, so we'll see. Okay, so little test, see if the oil's ready. Yeah, we're looking good. Oh, I didn't film that bit. That's all right. So if you remember last time, just put a teeny, teeny little bit of the mix into the uh, into the oil, and if it starts to bubble up, it's perfect. Okay, so as you can see, my curry sauce. Starting to thicken up nicely, okay? So we'll just leave it there just to tick over. So, like I said last week, guys, when you're doing this, be careful, nice and careful. Please don't burn yourself. I didn't hear of any accidents last week, and that's the most, the most important thing. Remember when you're adding the chicken, put it in and drop it away from you so it stops you from splashing anything on you, and that's uh, really, really important, okay? So, basically, all we're going to do, we're going to take a bit of the chicken with the mix, drop it in. This could start to fry pretty much immediately. Okay. You probably could start with maybe a, depending on the size of the saucepan you've got or what, you probably go to sort of a third or even half of the chicken you've got at one time and then we can let it come back to the heat. So, I hope everyone's getting on all right. Rinse my hands. So hopefully guys, you've got your uh, karate to start going on. These are coming out much better than before. Oh, you feel them almost crispy already. Okay. From some of the times I've done karate before and what I've seen is they don't usually need to uh, put them in the oven. Because it's chicken, I like to be extra doubly safe. Um, to ensure that it's completely cooked. Um, you want to get yourself a little saucepan of salted water on, if you haven't already, just ready for your noodles. Okay, now I'm using uh, udon noodles, which uh, I really like these, I think. Well, it's they're, curry udon. Exactly, uh, they're, they're, for me, uh, my favorite type of noodle. Kind of noodles you want. Uh, if you felt you, you didn't want noodle noodles, um, you could use uh, you, know, you, can really, you could use any any kind of noodles. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, you could do. You could use that for, for people with a gluten allergy. Again, you'd have to use uh, corn flour instead of flour for the uh, other part. For the uh, roux. For the roux. Right, how are we looking? These look great. Yeah, these look much better. Just uh, remember to give them a little mix, a little uh, a little turn around, evenly, nice and gently. Yeah, this is definitely, guys. If you're using corn flour, great. If you're able to get potato starch next time, then try all the potato starch. I already see now I'm much, much happier with the way this looked. I'm really, really happy, in fact. Yeah, they, they look oishi. Oishi. Okay, uh, the lemons, uh, the one lemon I've got you on your list is basically just to be cut into wedges, uh, just to be served on the plate. So the uh, chicken karage is just squeeze a lemon, a little bit of salt and pepper on there, and it's, uh, it's oh, so nice. So just, again, simplicity at its best with this dish, I absolutely love it. So you would recommend the potato starch Absolutely, I mean, we'll, we'll try it again later, but I'm seeing a much, much better result already just using the potato starch than using corn flour. Um, perhaps, I think if you're going to use the corn flour next time, maybe what you could do is add all the ingredients apart from the, the, the flour, the corn flour to the chicken, and then before you fry it, chuck the flour and give it a mix and fry. So I think once it gets wet, it becomes a little bit harder. So for me, when the chicken's floating really well, and when you put it down, it comes straight back up. I know it's cooked, but I don't want to risk it, so I'm going to make sure it's completely covered. This is perfect. Yeah, these, these look just like I've had them before. Okay, oh, the salt. Chicken. Just going to leave them there to drain for a minute or so, and then I'm going to put them on the tray and put them in the oven. Okay, going to. If your fryer is all right, and get the next lot of chicken in. Fortunately, the good thing is when you're using a wok with this, because it's got a very thin base, it doesn't take long to actually heat back up, which is great. And that's when you've got hungry mouths to feed, you get frying. Isn't that right, my love? Yep. We share. Huh? We share. We share. Okay, lovely. I mean, you can make these a bit bigger if you want to. Completely up to you. Are they often eaten as bar snacks in Japan? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you have it as a, as a whole side, as a whole dish. I think I'm hungry, I suppose. a lot. How much beer you drunk? Freshest beer. Freshest beer. All well, one cups. All well, one cups. I was just thinking about when we were in um, our first trip there, and there was this businessman, <laughs> and when we were drinking beer. The old man, the old man fell asleep. And yeah. Fell asleep and couldn't leave. <laughs> That's oh. hilarious. Poor guys. <laughs> right. Put the karage on there so they can go in the oven. Right now, if we have a look at the curry roux, you see it's really starting to thicken up. Kind of like a soup consistency. All right. It's pretty much spot on now. Once you've added your chicken and it's started to colour, don't forget to give it a little mix as well so you can break up those little pieces that might have stuck together. So, in with the curry roux, I'm going to add my peppers. Okay. Nicely. Yeah, these have come out much better. I'm much happier with them. They look really, really good. And the reason I'm putting them on a cooling rack to then go in the oven is so that any excess oil that hasn't been collected in this goes down because otherwise it will just make it a bit soggy when they go in the oven. And you do exactly the same tofu and Yep, yeah, exactly the same. I would still still do that. It doesn't look like Philan's um, <laughs> tempura though. 
I can say this because Philan's a friend, but Philan last week, he, uh, he, he, <laughs> he, instead of adding the butternut squash gently piece by piece, he poured the whole thing in like a big bowl of batter and it just formed this big tempura clump, which does sound absolutely awesome, but uh, perhaps not quite what you're after. Okay, I'm gonna add the edamame beans to the, uh, to the stock now. Okay, I don't think I'm going to need any more stock, so I'm just going to leave that to the side. Okay. And then what we can do, is you can put your noodles in the water. Well, break them up a little bit, make it a little bit easier. Okay. Once I'm using, you only take a couple of minutes, which is fantastic. Okay. And then pak choy in last bit. Okay, so all of that in there, I can get rid of my board. Clearing down. Unlike me, who just makes a mess. Oh, you do make a mess. But the things you make to eat are nice. Thank you. But that's the most important thing. Okay, for bowls. Okay. Now that the curry roux, for me, I think it's spot on consistency, right? It's just nice and saucy, really it's nice. more soupy, isn't it, than a, yeah, than a yeah. katsu curry? So I'm just going to put that on nice and low. Kalage is looking oishi. Obviously, the longer you leave it in here, the darker they're going to get in colour, the crispier they'll become. Okay, well, I'm happy with them, so I'm going to take them out. And they shouldn't need very long in the oven, we're only going to maybe put them in for a couple of minutes maximum because they're, they're thin pieces so they'll cook very easily. And the good thing with a, with a batter like this, what happens is it forms such a thick coating that it almost sort of seals the, the moisture in and steams it so it's sort of cooking from the inside really, really well. A little bit of salt. Yeah, good. Good, good. Yeah. Right. Again, guys, be really careful with the frying, the little fry you've uh, created, because I don't want you to burn yourself. Put them on. I'm put them in the uh, oven just for a few minutes. Okay. I can go over here. Okay. ready here guys so hopefully you've got everything ready to go so just a little recap from the beginning first thing we did was got the karage marinated so that's all of the ingredients plus the chopped chicken in a bowl give it a little mix half an hour um, but ideally overnight would be great and then uh, you just leave them to marinate curry roux which is with the flour the butter and the curry spices melt the butter add the flour Cook it, you want to cook it for about five, six minutes so it goes nice and uh, sort of goldeny colour. Then add your spices, another 30 seconds, just to help bring out those lovely aromas and flavours. Okay, then you want into a saucepan, sweat your onions off in a little bit of oil, add your stock, whichever it is, dashi or otherwise, add your curry roux, let it reduce down, then you can add all your ingredients. And then obviously cook your karage into the fryers, put it in the oven, and we're good to go. Right, so and then dry off first, dry off. Take your noodles out of the water. Then we are ready to build. So all I'm gonna do guys first, Noodles in the bowl. 
as evenly as possible. Again, like, I think it's something again you could do in advance. You could have your curry soup ready to go without the vegetables in it. Then you could just add the vegetables when your, your guests or friends are arriving or when they're like people back. Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe let's cut it. <laughs> okay. Last bit of the vegetables. Over. Bit of sauce. Another one for family meal when I get back to work. Oh yeah. Runny nose and teary eyes tonight, I'm afraid, ladies. I don't mind. If you're not a big handle the heat, Jimmy and Eddie, maybe uh, leave the cayenne out. You tell them now when possibly they've already made it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to sprinkle with. Uh, Spring onions. And there is our curry udon, guys. Lovely and oishi, as should be. Okay. And then we can move on to our karage. Joseph Jimmy's made it yet, he was waiting for this very reason. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought so. I thought so. But it's alright Jimmy, if you don't if you don't, you know, practice more and get the hot spiciness done, you'll never get it all. There we go. Look at that, they're looking absolutely wishy. I'm gonna pile these up in the middle. To look appetizing, you should get it on the plate. It still looks appetizing, it doesn't need to look fancy. Fanciful? Well, none of the food I've done is really fancy, it's just been good, humble, and honest food. And there we have it, guys chicken karage with lemon and uh, a curry udon, semi vegetarian. Oh, you see. Um, so yeah, thank you again for tuning in. I hope uh, the steps were clear. If you've got any questions, please, by all means, give us a, give us a message. DM me if you want. Uh, or if you've got a personal number, you can text me on there. Uh, it's going to be up to you. Uh, potentially, this is my last one for a while. Um, I'm potentially going back to work next week, which I'm really pleased for. I uh, might look to do one uh, in December, if possible. If there's anything particularly you'd like to do, um, or you want me to revisit something, we'll gladly do that, uh, and we'll, we'll see, but we'll, we'll see, coming up to a busy month in December for all chefs around the, around the country, so let's, uh, let's hope everyone's cracking on all right, but um, thank you again for tuning in, thanks for making this second lockdown 2.0 uh, a lot more enjoyable, give me a Friday purpose, rather than just uh, annoying the wife and playing games. So um, thanks very much, guys. Cheers. And uh, we will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.